and you can see it in your mind's eye and you can follow that formula, you're going to manifest it. But it's got to be something inside you that's so inspiring to you that there's no turning back. It has to be something you feel it's a relentless pursuit, that there's no option. You're going for it. About achieving what you would love to create in life or manifest the thing that's inside your brain and your heart and your mind that you want to bring into the world. But it's manifesting and it's a 13 step formula that I have been utilizing for 48 plus years now. So if you have a pencil and paper or something to write with, or maybe something to type with on your iPhone or whatever vehicle, iPad, you may want to take some notes. I mean, you can certainly watch this, but I think why writing them down is very to your, to your advantage. It's a formula that I've developed. Now, when I was 17 years old, I met a gentleman named Paul C. Bragg. He's the one that in one night inspired me to do what I'm doing. I was uh, learned challenged at the time. And I, for the first time in my life, after listening to him speak, I, I thought maybe I could uh, overcome my learning problems and someday become intelligent. At that time, it, you know, it was like a dream. Now it's a reality. <laughs> Although some people may question my intelligence at times, depending on what I'm doing. But He's the one that taught me not the steps in a formula, but the principles that I put into a formula over time. So I wrote down all the things I was learning from him and I formulated into this formula, step-by-step -step formula. So I'm going to go through it and elaborate on it. And please consider this. It's very, it's very useful. The first step in the formula is called purpose. Purpose or mission. Every human being has a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most important down to least important in their life. And whatever is highest on that list of importance, whatever is the most important value, most highest priority action or objective that they have, this is what we're going to call the purpose. There was a term in the time of Aristotle called telos, and telos meant the end in mind. This is the ultimate end that an individual pursues. In my case, it's teaching. That's what I love doing. That's what I spontaneously do. That's what's highest on my value. So whatever's highest on your values, your list of values, is the purpose. Your teleological purpose is an expression of what you value most. It's the thing that you feel called to do, the thing that you feel spontaneously inspired to contribute. This is where you're going to excel the most. This is where you're going to have the highest achievements. This is where you're going to have the greatest, clearest intentions. This is the area that activates the prefrontal cortex and the, the diencephalon into helping you achieve. This is the key of mastery, actually. So that's why I have on my website, complimentary and private, a value determination process that I hope that you, if you haven't done, please go to it. Go on to drdmartini.com and hit value determination. It's private, it's, com it's completely complimentary. And just take the time to go through it and do it again a week later, a month later, and a quarter, and every quarter, just do it. By doing it, this exercise, it's 13 questions, it'll help you identify what your life demonstrates is most important to you. So often people have this idea that this is important and this is important and they have fantasies about what they want to do in life. But I'm only interested in the, in the questioning of what is truly important and what does your life demonstrate? My life demonstrates researching and teaching. I do it every single day of my life, seven days a week. And nobody has to remind me to do it. When you find the thing that you are spontaneously inspired to do, that you don't need any outside motivation to get you to do, that is the area you're going to excel in most. That is the area that's most fulfilling, most meaningful. So first of the formula is identifying what is truly the thing that you feel is your purpose, your contribution, your mission of contribution in the world. Now that may be raising a beautiful family. Rose Kennedy from the Kennedy family, her mission statement was I dedicate my life to raising a family of world leaders. It may be some social cause. It may be some business. It may be 
building wealth. It may be keeping fit. It may be a spiritual quest, whatever that means to you. It could be physical fitness. I don't, I'm not going to judge what that is. What matters is what's truly meaningful and inspiring and fulfilling to you. You know, in the movie, The Secret, there was a principle called the law of attraction. And when you are concentrating your focus on the thing that's most important, you maximize what has been called the law of attraction. You synchronize opportunities. And there's physiological and brain mechanisms on how that works. You're literally in the thalamus, the pulmonary nuclear in the thalamus. It filters information out according to what you value most and allows you to synchronously observe, take action, decisions quickly, et cetera, in that area. You're going to excel most if you're pursuing what's truly most important to you. I tell people, if you don't fill your day with high priority actions and inspire you, your day is going to fill up with low priority distractions that don't. So it's very crucial to identify what's really, really, really most important to you, what your life really demonstrates, not what you think it should be, ought to be, supposed to be, got to be, have to be, must, what it used to be, what you hope it will be, but what it really is. So please take the time to go to the website. Just do that exercise. It's free, complimentary. Do it again, do it again until you have a tear of gratitude and you'll bam, that's what I'm up to. That's what I'm really committed to. That's what my life's demonstrating. Because if you need motivation from the outside to say, do what you say is important to you, it's, that's not what's important to you. You don't have to have motivation to do what is really, really, really important to you. You don't need motivation. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not here to motivate you with persuasions and rhetoric and things. I'm interested in helping you find what is truly most deeply meaningful to you so you can structure your life around that. That's the secret behind the secret left out of the secret. Now, once you identify what that is, and you maybe write out clearly and concisely what it is you're really committed to, what is it that's so deeply meaningful that you would pursue it? Just know that the moment you do, you will not be able to avoid thinking about it. Your innermost dominant thought becomes your outermost tangible reality, because what you think about, you tend to keep in your awareness, you tend to take actions on, you tend to make decisions more efficiently around. So what's interesting is our dominant thought is an expression of what we value most. I'm basically, my highest value is again, researching and teaching, teaching particularly. I think about it every night, every morning. When I get up out of bed, I'm thinking about who I'm getting to teach today and what I'm gonna teach and uh, what was the research that I'm doing. This morning, I was already, I watched over an hour or something long video on oncology and treatments of oncology because I'm working on a project with somebody on that. And so whatever it is that is most important to you, you will automatically dominate your thought on it. And again, you're, you're, you'll filter your reality. If your highest value is raising beautiful children, you walk in a mall, you will spot children's items. If your highest value is business, you walk in that same mile mall, you will not see children's items, you'll see business items. If your highest value is fitness, you'll go right to the Nike store or something. You will notice and filter your reality according to what you value most, and you'll automatically think about it. So your purpose, which is an expression of what your highest value is, your telos, you will automatically determine what you think about. And if those are congruent and you know what that highest value is and you dominate your thought on it, you're increasing the probability of having it a momentum building achievement path. Now, what's interesting is whenever you're living in your highest value and being congruent with that, the blood glucose and oxygen goes into the forebrain. It's, it leads to use stress, not distress. Use stress is wellness promoting. So the second you're living according to your highest value and you're dominating your thought on that, you will automatically activate an area in the medial prefrontal cortex that goes right into the V5, V6 area of the occipital cortex and give you associations for visual images to be able to see what you're striving for. And now there's been an old proverb that's biblical that says those with a vision flourish, those without a vision perish. Well, what happens is if you set a goal that is aligned with your highest values, that you dominate your thought on it, you will automatically see it in your mind's eye. The executive function of the medial prefrontal cortex, the executive center is involved in inspired vision and actually seeing and strategically planning how to get through and navigate through any obstacle and get that vision. And if you can see the vision, that's crucial. In my office, uh, in my beautiful office in Houston, Texas, uh, in Williams Tower, is a vision of what I perceived when I was 17 years old the night I met Paul Bragg. And Andrew Tischler out of uh, Melbourne, Australia painted that, did a magnificent job of painting it. It's inspiring to look at of how I wanted to reach the world in there. With, with my outreach to teach. But a, per, a person who can see it in their mind's eye can manifest it their, their, their reality. 
So what happens is when you have a purpose and you dominate your thought on it and you can see it in your mind's eye and you can visualize it and the one who can focus on every finer detail is the one that manifests it. That means that because any detail you don't see in the vision is usually an obstacle you run into your game in life. But the second you can see it clearly in your mind's eye, Phelps, 28 medals, gold medals and different medals in, uh, in swimming, could see the details in his mind to win those championships and those Olympic uh, medals. He could see it in his mind's eye. He ran, re rehearsed it in his mind's eye. A guy named Joe Ganera that I met when I was 23 years old at the Texas Chiropractic College many years ago, who was an amazing runner who used to run in his mind more than actually on the pavement. And he would actually, and he would win marathons. I mean, it was amazing, this guy. But he could actually see it in his mind's eye and therefore outwit and outperform some of the people that are out there working, but they couldn't see it in their mind. So you will automatically see it. So if you take the time to create a visual image of what you want, not just a vision board, but a vision mind, you increase the probability of achieving things. So the thing is, is the congruency. I can't emphasize how important it is to find out what you value most. That's why I want you to go online and do that value determination. Because if you find what's truly most important that you spontaneously are trying to do and you dominate your thought on it, you will see it. I've seen it in the Breakthrough Experience program that I've taught from 32 years now. I've seen it when people finally get that and they get really clear on it. They, tears, they get teary eyed and they look back and they see exactly what they want and they see it in their mind's eye. And wow, the moment they do that, it's kind of like an impossible for you not to fulfill it. It's, it's destined. It just feels like a feeling of destiny. And I've been asking people in the break to experience for three decades now, more, on, on when they access that. You can see it in their face, you can see it in their eyes, and it's almost like it's destined. They, they, it's, there's no turning back. It's a relentless pursuit all of a sudden. And when you actually have that clarity, you can articulate it, which is number four, which is to be able to articulate like an affirmation. The word affirmation in kind of the new age movement is positive statements, but the true definition of affirmation means to make firm in one's mind, to make firm in one's mind. The only thing that's gonna be firm in your mind is something you're truly committed to. The thing that absolutely wakes up the frontal cortex, the executive center, and you can see it in your mind's eye. That's what you're certain about. Certainty does not come from the lower amygdala area, does not come from uncertainty, does not come from lower values. You can never have a, a certainty in an area of lower values, but you can have certainty in the direction of what's truly meaningful to you. So the way you know you can see clearly in your mind's eye is you can articulate in detail what you're going to create. And any detail you can't articulate is something that's unclear in the mind. So a sign you have a clear vision and that you're dominating your thought on it, and it's clearly a mission for you, is that you can articulate it fluently. And when you can articulate it, somebody can see it. When I was speaking in Melbourne, Australia, a number of years back, almost a decade now, I had about 1,200 people in an audience. And I shared a story about the night I met Paul Bragg. And it was an inspiring thing. And I teared up and I was sharing the story. And a gentleman, Andrew Tischler, came out of the audience up at the front at the very end. And he says, Dr. Martini, your story inspired me. I'm an artist and painter. I would love to be able to paint what you just described. And we exchanged emails and he says, I'd like to, to put together a, a, a rough idea on it and send it to you. And if you authorize it, we'll, we'll, we'll paint it. And I said, that'd be fantastic. And I don't know how he did it. He just, he captured that moment in my mind from my presentation. When he sent it to me, I was just brought to tears. I was going, wow. So the sign that you can, can you articulate your vision so clearly that somebody can see it? That's when you know you have clear vision, and you're on track with your highest value. Now, once you do that, you'll automatically have a different set of feelings. Instead of the polarized emotional feelings like joy and sorrow and happy and sad and seek and avoid and elation, depression and infatuation, resentment, which are polarized, you have what I call synthesized feelings, transcendent feelings, which is grace, which is love, which is inspiration, which is true enthusiasm, the divine within, as some people call it, and also certainty and presence. These are, these are what I call the transcendental feelings, which are confirmations that you're authentic and living by what you value most. You're now being authentic. Your identity revolves around what your highest value is. Your ontological identity is an expression of your highest value. Your teleological purpose is an expression of your highest value. 
your epistemological desire to learn is in your highest value. You automatically absorb information according to what you value most. That's why the mother would see the children's clothes because that's what's most important to her in the environment. We absorb information, retain information, and apply information there. That's why we have the highest degree of achievement in that area. We're disciplined, reliable, and focused in our highest value, and we procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate in our lowest. So if we start off with the highest value, we dominate our thought on it, we visualize it, we affirm it, we feel inspired by it, we know we're on track. If you get the transcendental feelings, gratitude, love, inspiration, enthusiasm, certainty, and presence, that's a sign there's authenticity. That's a sign you're congruent. That's a sign of fluency. Fluency goes with congruency. When you're in that state, you will automatically want to write things down, which is the next step. Writing things down, uh, you want to capture it. I'm sure all of you have had moments when you're so inspired by something, man, I, I, I got to write that down. I got to capture it. I don't want to lose that idea. You write it down. And when you do, the next steps are in space and time. Where would you love to create it? When would you love to create it? And when you're actually clear in your vision, you can see how you're going to do it, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. You actually create a kind of a, a, a space, a time, and, and, a, and a strategy in your mind. That's the beauty of the executive center. It can literally articulate to you and de de design for you. It's the design center. And I say people who live by design go farther than people who live by duty. People that are conforming to other people's values and subordinating to other people's values and trying to live in, in lower values, fitting in, conforming, are not the people who are the visionary leaders that go and do extraordinary things. They're not the manifestors. They're the ones that are waiting to see what happens instead of making things happen. So if you automatically write it down in space and time and sit down and plan your life, people who fail to plan, plan to fail is the old proverb. If you're sitting there inspired by a vision, you can articulate that and write it out and put it down when you want to do it, where you want to do it, and refine that and polish that and write that. I sometimes, on my master plan text, which is 30 volumes, I've been working on since I was 17. I started the night I met Paul Bragg and the next day and the next day, I, every time I learned from him, I was writing things. I started a master planning at that point and writing down how I wanted my life. And I realized that if I don't decide how I want my life, other people do. And nobody's getting up in the morning and dedicating their life to you. If you're not dedicating it to it, you're gonna be infiltrated by everybody else's expectation. And you're gonna basically be living by default, not by design. So I basically sat down and I wrote those things out and I've now manifested those and keep metrics of those and I've get to achieve those things and it's extremely fulfilling in life. And I'm a firm believer that that manifestation, I'm, I'm not, this, this, this message today is not just something, a little whimmy thing here. This is something I've been living for 48 years, almost 49 years. It's very important to me. And by, by going through and actually writing it out in space and time, exactly what you wanna do and where you wanna do it and when you wanna do it. I wrote down that I wanted to go to all the countries around the world. I've been keeping records of every country that we've been to, 154 countries I've spoken in, writing down every city that we've been into because I made it a mission to do that keeping records of the numbers of people that you reach. I mean, I'm a metric freak because I found out that if you really are committed to doing something, you'll metric it. You'll write it out and you'll measure what your, your, your actions are relative to what you're saying, what you're striving for. If it's not matching it, somehow it's not really important to you. If it's really important to you, you'll be working on it. You don't need motivation again. You'll be inspired from within intrinsically to just take action. I want intrinsic drive. I don't want external motivation. External motivation is a symptom, never a solution for achievement. Because if you have to have a motivation to get you to do it, it's like pushing people uphill at work. If they have to be motivated, that's they're in the wrong job. And you have you have a, the managers hire the people that are not inspired by it. They're not engaged. And you want to be engaged in your life. You want to be inspired by your life. And you're not going to live an inspired life doing low priority things. You better be learning to delegate those. Because if you can't delegate lower priority things, you won't get to live the high priority things. And you live by high priority things, your self-worth goes up. You live by lower priority things, your self-worth goes down. So the next thing is then taking action. The moment you clarify what you're going to do and you know what you're going to do and it's spontaneously inspiring to you, you'll want to take action. And that action is going to have filled with energy. I learned a long time ago, the energy is infinite once you recognize the source and your vitality is directly proportioned to the, vi the vividness of the vision that you have. And if you want more energy, just get clear about what you're really committed to and focus on the service of making that difference. If you do, your energy goes up. I don't have a lack of energy. I've been doing this for a long time and I'm just as inspired and enthused as I was back at the time when I started this thing. And it's because of clarity of vision. And if you're basically, you have tremendous amount of energy, it's because 
You're not living to eat, you're eating to live. You're not, you know, when somebody's really inspired about things, they have incredible, the executive center calms down the amygdala and you have incredible discipline and you're focused. And if a person is not disciplined and focused, it's because they're scattered and they're doing low priority things. I don't need to be reminded to do what I do every day. I would need to be reminded if I was doing low priority things, but not the things that I love doing. And so what automatically you will take action and you will have energy for it. And that energy is not, there's no limitation on energy when you're doing something that's truly inspiring and meaningful to you. And when you do, then you realize the resources around you are all around you. There's no lack of resources, but you can't see them if you're not living congruently with the highest value. When you're doing something that's low on your values, you have attention deficit disorder, retention deficit disorder, intention deficit disorder. But when you're doing something high on your values, you have attention surplus order. That means you're able to see information and grab information, take in information and take action on it. And you will see resources, you will see opportunities, you will see people possibilities. You will take your resources that are in front of you that you can't see if you're living by lower values and you will observe them and you will take actions on them. So that's why the matter, which is the next part of the formula after energy, taking actions with energy on matter automatically is there and there's a synchronicity and there's people, places, things, ideas and events that surface in your life that align with what you value most that start to be acutely aware of and acted upon. And that's it. It's not that it was there and missing in the past. It's just, it's there. This is really the key to the law of attraction. If you remember the movie, The Secret, that I had the blessing to be in and the newest movie, How Thoughts Become Things. If you like what I'm saying today, get that movie, How Thoughts Become Things also, because in there in the new book that's come with it, this manifestation formula is outlined, but you want to make sure that you get the highest priority. That's the key in this process. And on my website, again, go back and do the value determination process. And there's also a, an extra video on there online called manifesting, right? Go on there and take a look at this. It's, I, I elaborate on this in more depth than what I can do in this brief 30 minutes here. But once you take actions on it with energy on the resources, whenever you're living by your highest values, your self-worth is at the highest. And your self-worth, when it's high, you feel you deserve, True self-worth is not elevated or distressed self-esteem. True self-worth is the authentic you. When you're proud and cocky, that's an elevated self-esteem. When you're shamed and depressed and kind of beaten down, that's a low self-esteem. But when you're in the center, it's true self-worth. When you're authentic, living by your highest values and objectively pursuing something deeply meaningful, your self-worth is at its peak and your deserve level automatically comes in. You feel I'm worthy of having what I dream about. And that's a component. And on the last step of the, the formula, it's gratitude. And every day document, I have the largest collection of gratitudes of anybody I've ever met. I've been writing on them for years and years and years. Write down what you're grateful for, because if you're grateful for what you got, you get more to be grateful for. In my book, Count Your Blessings, I outline that. My mom taught me that when I was four years old. And I put that book out before she passed away to make sure that that book got out to thank her. But if you're actually grateful for what you've got, your mind is more resilient, adaptable, and able to see things in a state of gratitude. Because gratitude, true grace, is a sign that you're authentic. If you're not, if you're judging the world and infatuated or resentful, you're imposing an illusion of your own projection onto the world. But if you're graced and you're in a state of gratitude and there's nothing to change in you relative to others or others relative to you, and you're really appreciative about life in that moment, in that grace state, the authentic you. That's where you're most profound and powerful. The magnificence of who you are there is more profound than any fantasies you'll impose on yourself. In the process of doing that, you want to make sure that you actually have that gratitude outcome. And when you're manifesting things, it's easy to do it because you're documenting and metricing all the things that you're achieving. And in the process of doing that, you'll manifest. You'll manifest it. Now, let me go through that formula again because you may not have picked them all out. But let me just go through it one more time. Purpose plus thought plus vision, plus internal dialogue or affirmation, firmness in one's mind, plus feeling, plus writing things down in space and time, plus taking actions with energy on matter, resources, plus feeling deserving, plus being thankful, brings a manifestation. That formula, that 13-step formula has been the key formula steps that I've used, again, since I was 17, 18 years old. When I first heard some of these principles for Paul Bragg, when I first met him, I met him on an evening program, um, November 18th, 1972, at the Sunset Recreation Hall in 
in Waimea Bay area in Hawaii on the North shore where I was a surfer. And there after that, he said, well, each morning he has a class on the other side of the island, uh, either at Fort Nerusi or sometimes the one in Waiwa. And I went to join him. I, man, I was up hitchhiking into the other side of the island early in the morning just to make sure I could be there. And whatever he would say, I would try to remember and take notes. And I had a piece of paper and I'd write those things down. And that formula was emerged by just writing down what he was saying. And then I started to imply that into my life. And I realized something really important. You have to start with what you know. You start with what you know. The first time I wrote my mission statement, I knew, I knew that I knew that I knew that I wanted to travel the world. So I wrote down travel the world. I knew that I knew that I wanted to overcome my learning problems and become intelligent. I want to learn. I knew that, that when I thought of somebody who is learned and intelligent, I thought a teacher. And I said, I want to be a teacher. I want to travel the world. I want to study these things he's calling universal laws because he mentioned that term. Sounded cool. I didn't know what it meant, but it sounded cool. I wrote down that. I wrote my first little mission statement as a sentence. And then I read it and refined it and read it and refined it and read it and refined it now 79 times in all these 48 years, 79 times the renditions of that original statement. I've never thrown it away. I just kept refining it, reading, refining, reading, refining, laying out what you want to manifest, reading it, refining it, planning it, reading it, refining it, getting clear on it. If you're clear and you're concise and you can see it in your mind's eye and you can follow that formula, you're going to manifest it. But it's got to be something inside you that's so inspiring to you that there's no turning back. It has to be something you feel it's a relentless pursuit, that there's no option. You're going for it. When you don't, if you have something that is not really that inspiring to you, it's not high in your values, but something deeply meaningful that's truly high in your values that inspires you, that spontaneously you can't stop doing, that's what you want to do. Don't waste your time on something that's not really truly inspiring to you. How can you expect an inspiring life if you're doing low priority things and de depressive things? Anytime you're not delegating lower priority things and sticking to higher priority things, you're devaluing yourself. So you want to make sure you're pursuing the highest priority actions you can each day. That's the key to manifesting the, the formula. So again, purpose, which is your highest value, plus thought, which is a, a spontaneous thing that comes out of you. Your innermost dominant thought will become your outermost tangible reality. Plus vision, clear vision makes things happen. Being able to articulate that fluently in terms of a certain firmness of one's mind and affirmation, automatically feeling inspired and grateful, which is the confirmation you're authentic, automatically wanting to write those things down in space and time and plan and detail the plans, which I've spent thousands and thousands of hours on plans. And I find that that's incredibly, uh, you know, anytime you're reading something and writing a goal down and writing a goal down every single day, you increase the odds of seeing opportunities and taking advantage of them, I guarantee you. The synchronicities are too, too obvious. And almost anybody that's done goals knows what I'm talking about. In the process of doing that, writing down in space and time, taking action automatically, spontaneously, with an amazing amount of energy, because enthusiasm is a powerful energy. It creates a, a chain reaction of people helping you get your goals automatically with energy on resources. Resources are abundant once you recognize that. You can't see the resources until you're congruent. And then automatically... As you take those actions with energy on matter, the resources, you automatically feel the deserve level because you're living by your highest values where your self-worth is at its highest and you'll be grateful. In fact, it's been shown in the, the frontal cortex, whenever you're doing something and your highest values, it's aligned with that, you tend to see things not in the way, but on the way. You tend to not see things as failures and fantasies. You tend to see them as feedback, a homeostatic feedback to authenticity. Everything that's going on in your life is trying to help you become authentic and congruent with who you really are. And so the manifestation is a confirmation of authenticity. So this formula has been the one I've been using since I was 17, 18 years old. And I, um, I just wanted to share that with you because I know that if you were to go through that and literally lay out an objective that's truly can, inspiring to you, that you are, there's no question, write it out, follow that process. And I assure you, time times intensity gives results. The more intensely you focus on that outcome, the more intensely you take those actions, the more intensely you clarify that, refine the goal, the more intensely you do all those steps, time times intensity gives results, the quicker the results you'll have in your life. Now, I'm not interested in immediate gratification. I'm interested in a long-term vision, but I just know that efficiency and effectiency is what gives you competitive advantage and comparative advantage, as Ricardo says, in the world. Whoever can manifest something more effectively and efficiently than somebody else automatically rises in leadership. 
So give yourself permission to shine, give yourself permission to manifest things according to the formula. It will be applied. And it's just as it's done in my life. This is the key behind the law of attraction. You really want the law of attraction? I just gave it to you. That's the law of attraction in at least a 30 minute version. I have a much more advanced version on it, but that's at least a 30 minute version of it. And um, so call in, write in, let us know about what how you're doing on the manifestation. There's no harm in having a visual board, but I have a visual book, it's thousands of pages, and I'm a firm believer in keeping metrics. So follow the formula, start manifesting what you want. Your innermost dominant thought will become your outermost tangible reality. Also, I just want to let you know that there's an upcoming masterclass called Accessing Your Seven Greatest Powers. And um, I want to make sure that you know that you can act also get when you sign up for that. Now, this is what this is going to do is how to empower all seven areas of your life according to your values so you can do what you love and empower all areas of your life. Because any area of your life, you don't empower people overpower you. And that's where the distractions come in. So to have a, a perpetual life, a vi vivacious life, this accessing your seven greatest powers, this master class, you definitely want to attend. And also, if you sign up now, you'll actually receive a free gift, which is awakening your astronomical vision. And I am absolutely certain that, that video right there, that audio program, pardon me, will automatically inspire you to go into expand your vision. So listen to that about five times between now and the time of the master class. And I'll see you there. So remember the manifestation formula. I look forward to hearing any 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 comments about what your achievements are for the for the week or for the month or however long it is. Keep me informed. Love you all.